Now, I actually start uh, talking about the Kempers uh, shortly after I left uh, Hainer House, and I've already explained uh, the basic ideas behind the village and how it works. <clears throat> and uh, I've told them that uh, Reverend James Kemper was uh, the uh, first pastor of the First Presbyterian Church here in Cincinnati, uh, and that he came to Cincinnati in 1791. Uh, and I've explained that Cincinnati in that time period uh, was just a little village of about 300 people. And by about this time, while I'm talking, we're coming up on the flatboat, and I explain a little bit about the flatboat, and then I tell the, the visitors that um, uh, James Kemper, uh, arrived on a little flatboat like that uh, in 1791. And I asked them to imagine the um, flatboat uh, with um, all of the family's possessions piled on top. Uh, plus we're told that the, Kemper brought, the Kempers brought their horses. Uh, the horses would have to ride on the back. Uh, and then the people piled on anywhere that they would fit. And uh, at that time, the Kempers had 10 children. Uh, shortly after the Kempers arrived, there was a tremendous battle between the Native Americans and the troops at Fort Washington. And uh, the uh, troops at Fort Washington were basically slaughtered. And the, uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, settlers in Cincinnati uh, were terrified, and a lot of them were talking about abandoning C Cincinnati and going back to where they had come from. And Reverend Kemper is uh, credited with having gone around and talked to the various families and encouraged them and uh, convinced them to stay. And so in a lot of ways, we probably uh, owe even the existence of Cincinnati to Reverend Kemper. Uh, the uh, the Kemper family tried to live downtown. Now remember, there was only 300 people there, uh, but they, uh, after two years, they decided it was too crowded and too expensive and too noisy. So they bought 160 acres up on a hillside to start a farm. And they had so many walnut trees on their farm that they called their farm Walnut Hill. Uh, <laughs> for the first uh, 10 years, the family lived in a two room block house which is kind of like a little fort uh, because they were afraid of attack by Native Americans. Uh, but in 1795, with the Treaty of Greenville, the uh, danger from Native Americans passed. And in 1804, the um, uh, Kemper family built uh, this log house. Uh, they had a total of 15 children and uh, the youngest child, his name was Charles Adolphus Benjamin Kemper, which is a big name for a little baby. He was born the day the family moved into the house. Now we don't call this a log cabin. A log cabin is a temporary structure uh, that you uh, put up while you're waiting to build your permanent house. A uh, log cabin would probably have four walls and a roof and just a dirt floor because you're not planning to stay there very long. This house is a log house because it has a, a wooden floor. It's got uh, glass windows. It has plastered walls. It's got uh, fireplaces, uh, two stories, and it's got porches front and back. Now, Reverend Kemper was a traveling minister. Uh, he went all over Southern Ohio, uh, Kentucky, and what today is West Virginia, starting new churches and uh, visiting the churches he had already started. So sometimes he was on the road two or three months at a time. And while he was gone, uh, Judith and the children ran the farm. Now, when I say children, I don't want to give the impression that there were 15, 10 year olds running around. Obviously, uh, by the time the family moved into this house, the uh, uh, majority of the children uh, were already adults. Now, this is one of the two oldest houses still standing in Cincinnati. The other is the Betts House downtown, which was also built in 1804. Uh, but we don't know the exact date of that house. Uh, so I can't tell you which of the two has the uh, honor of being the oldest house. 
Uh, we know the date uh, that this house was built because it's the birth date of Charles Adolphus, which was June uh, 4th, 1804. Now, by this time, I've finally gotten into the house. And I explained that the house has four rooms, has uh, two rooms downstairs, two rooms upstairs, plus a small storeroom. And you may think that that's not very much uh, space for 17 people, and you would be right. But remember, when they built this house, they still had that two-room blockhouse, so that had to uh, help to some extent. Uh, <clears throat> but even so, um, rooms in this time period had to do more than one function. Uh, we tend to have, in our houses, we have a living room and maybe a dining room and a uh, kitchen and so forth. Well, if um, you had company over, this was the sitting room. If uh, it's mealtime and uh, Judith Kemper has to set up a table for 17, she'll do it in here uh, <clears throat> because this is the biggest room and she'll call this her dining room. And of course, at night, uh, basically every room was a bedroom. Now, when the sun went down and the outside chores were done, the family would gather in this room, and then they would have indoor chores that they could do or had to do. Uh, the girls would be sewing and making clothes. The boys would be uh, cleaning their guns and mending people's boots. Uh, and then they would sing hymns and they would read scripture. Uh, and then they had time to relax because it wasn't all work back in those days. And the kids had toys to play with. The, um, um, when it was time to go to bed, the boys would uh, push the furniture to the sides of the room in this room. And uh, then they would sleep on the floor on pallets. Uh, <clears throat> over here, we have uh, Mrs. Kemper's side saddle. By the way, if you're uh, interpreting in this room, um, I recommend a flashlight because <laughs> it does come in handy. The natural light in here, especially on a, uh, a rainy day, uh, it leaves a lot to be desired. Well, anyway, we've got Mrs. Kemper's side saddle over there. Back in those days, um, it was uh, considered improper for a woman to sit astride a horse because women didn't wear pants. And so they had to sit with both legs on the same side of the horse, uh, covered by their long skirt. And I can't imagine it would be very um, comfortable, and I wouldn't want to try it myself. Uh, the stairs uh, over here um, are uh, kind of unusual. As you can see, they go halfway up, and then they split, and they go up to the two uh, bedrooms upstairs. And at the landing, they kind of fan out. Um, and Helen Kemper Blinn, who was the daughter of baby um, Charles Adolphus, when she was in her 80s, uh, she talked about the uh, uh, life in this house when she was, a, was a, a very young child. And she said as she came down those steps, she always stayed way over on the side by the wall because she wanted to be sure to, to step on the part of the steps uh, that was the widest so that she could avoid a fall. Uh, and then I usually take people into the dining room and, and I explain that we, if you fast forward 40, um, to 44, 42 years to 1846, uh, we know at that time that that room was Mrs. Kemper's bedroom uh, because she passed away in it. Uh, by that time, almost all of the uh, boys and girls were um, uh, married and out on their own. And so uh, there were only five people left in the house. And at that time, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the family made that their, their uh, dedicated dining room. Now, the Kemper family, uh, uh, or this house, I'm sorry, this house, uh, stood on what today is Kemper Lane uh, from 1804 to 1897 with members of the Kemper family living in it. And then from 1897 to 1912, it was largely vacant. And then in 1912, it was moved to the Cincinnati Zoo. Uh, in 
1982, it was moved out here to Heritage Village and restored the way you see it today. And at this point, I usually ask the visitors to uh, step back out onto the front porch uh, because I want to tell them some things about it. Mainly, it's just a way to get people out, uh, out back out of the house. And then I lock the door. And then uh, I explained that uh, on its original location, this house had a view of the Ohio River and the hills of Kentucky. And so especially in the evening, this was a particularly pleasant place for the family to hang out. And a lot of times if they had company over, they would just um, uh, entertain out there on the front porch. Now, they never would have taken their guests, though, to the back porch um, because that's a work area. But I explained then to the people on the tour that, uh, well, we'll get, we're going to go back there now, but I promise I won't put you to work. Uh, and then we go to the back porch. Uh, as I pass the root cellar, I, uh, I tell them that uh, the Kempers had a root cellar, and it was said that their root cellar was dry as a powder horn. And when we get up on the porch, I explained that that's basically uh, like an extra room and they could um, uh, be out there when the uh, light is good. They could bring a spinning wheel out there. They could be doing their um, uh, doing their laundry and um, uh, that the uh, grinding wheel out there would be to sharpen their tools. And there's a hopper out there too. I explained that hopper uh, was for collecting ashes from the fireplace. They didn't waste things and they could use the ashes to make live soap. I also point out the door that goes to the stairs up to the second story and the little closet under the stairwell there. And I tell them that that, is, um, that was called the uh, saddle house and that's where Mrs. Kemper kept her side saddle. <music>